be better to just play it as a medium shot with the situation. Another thing, maybe. Let's take that. Can't do it with your head down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's not bad. Let's do that. What's going on on my YouTube? It is I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And continuing on in my series of Stanley Kubrick reviews, in today's video I'll be taking a look at the 1957 war drama, Paths of Glory. A commanding officer defends three scapegoats on trial for a failed offensive that occurred within the French Army in 1916. Paths of Glory was released in 1957. Based off the novel of the same name, this movie was mildly successful when it came out. There was a little bit of a controversy surrounding this movie regarding some of the anti-war messages surrounding the film and how it presented the French Army, but... Critics and audiences even at the time still found something to enjoy about this movie. And this film has only gotten more and more popular and resonant among Stanley Kubrick fans uh, the older it's gotten. Uh, it's seen as one of Kubrick's best films. And I gotta be honest here, considering, you know, me and Kubrick, we're, we tend to be at arm's length with one another. There's some movies of his, you know, I respect them, but I don't love them. We'll get to those like 2001 and Clockwork Orange and Dr. Strangelove. They're not like personal favorites or anything. But The Shining is one where I think is an absolute masterpiece. That one I'll defend and say it's one of the all-time greats. I mean, some of his early films I've covered on this director project, I'm not too crazy on you. Know, Fear and Desire, The Killing, Killer's Kiss, if you've seen those previous reviews. But I gotta say, Paths of Glory is absolutely worth the hype. I think this is a fantastic movie. This is actually my second time watching the film. I watched the film several years ago now when I was first introduced to Stanley Kubrick's filmography because I remembered the first time I saw this film was when I saw 2001 for the first time and when I first saw that when I hated it. And so I thought, you know, cynical, you know, getting out of my teenage years, me, when I was watching Kubrick for the first time, I was like, oh, Stanley Kubrick is a hack. I'm not going to enjoy any of these movies. And then I saw Paths of Glory for the first time, and even then I'm like, yeah, this movie's actually pretty awesome, and it made me want to check out some of Stanley Kubrick's other films. So this is one that, you know, I've wanted to revisit for some time to see if it still holds up, if I still enjoy it on a second watch. And guess what? I think this movie is really saying something here. I think this movie was, for one thing, it was ahead of its time. Because usually a lot of the war movies in like the 40s, the 60s, I mean, they're great war stories, yes. But they tend to be more, I guess, patriotic and celebratory. Not that that's a bad thing, as there's great stories of heroism in a lot of war movies. And I respect a lot of movies for that. But there wasn't too many that showed like the brutality that happens in uh, real events and you know, what's depicted in war cinema. And Kubrick was trying to say something a little bit more profound with this movie. And uh, I have to respect him for doing that, especially considering uh, the time this movie was released in 1957. Uh, this movie has to be very greatly commended because this film is pretty brutal to watch at times. Not that the film is like crazy gory or anything like that. It's a movie that anyone can sit down and still get the full gist of the story and not be alienated by the brutality. But the whole nature of the story where it's the army is going off on this mission. It's pretty much a suicide mission. Uh, people are scared to die on this mission and a lot of these, a lot of these army men uh, don't really want to follow orders in this case because they know something is messed up behind the scenes and the general who's trying to save his own reputation in this matter puts three scapegoats at play and tries to accuse them of cowardice and send them to death row pretty much. So it's a pretty messed up story when you uh, get the full details of what's actually going on. Not only are the war sequences so visceral, but the whole courtroom drama stuff where you know that 
something is wrong about this. Like, there's a lot of trumped up charges in regards to these three men. Like, yeah, some of these men, you know, they were cowards, but there was more to play in the situation and other factors going on that led to the guys doing what they did. And I think some of them should have been defended for that. And we see that through Kirk Douglas's performance, who's one of the commanding officers who's defending the three on trial. He definitely sees the red tape. And I love his performance. I love, you know, the character's sheer determination to find the truth and find the justice in this uh, very crazy situation going on. But there's just a lot of crazy factors at play. Uh, the general character is easily the most hateable character in this movie because uh, he only did these things just because he wants a promotion so badly. And so he's willing to get it done so he can get another star, even if it means the expense of his own men. And yeah, you definitely want to punch that character by the end of this movie because he's pretty despicable and he doesn't really care about human life that much. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things that play on war uh, because a lot of these soldiers are fighting for their country pretty much. But then other characters, you know, are just trying to survive and uh, they're, they're getting put in these bad situations where it's getting harder for them to find the hope in a lot of these situations. Uh, the movie definitely raises a lot of questions on war and how it messes with one's humanity, the, the more uh, the bloodshed you know, wages on and stuff. And so there's a lot that this movie has to unpack. It works as a war movie. It especially works as a courtroom drama. As, you know, I'm a sucker for those anyway. So the courtroom drama stuff was very compelling. It leads to a devastating ending because, you know, it's not the most carefree, happy-going movie in the world. It definitely ends on a dour note, and I don't think that's a spoiler because uh, that does kind of set in the tone of the story. And the ending of this movie is so good. I I was just in absolute shock. The two times I've seen this film by just how much of a devastator the ending actually is. It involves a woman singing. That's all I'll say without diving into spoilers. And Kubrick does a great job of saying so much with the, the faces of the characters without actually saying a thing with what he's trying to say with the story. And I, I think that's a very powerful way of affecting a message to the movie without going overly preachy, and I have to respect Kubrick so much for that. This movie has fantastic cinematography, especially the steady cam shots when we see the characters in the trenches. Those sequences definitely stand out, and I think that was the first time Kubrick really started to experiment uh, with some of his filmmaking tricks. This is where he really started to perfect his craft so well. The performances in here are all really good. I've already brought up Kirk Douglas, who's fantastic in the film. I apologize for not revealing my true feelings. I apologize, sir, for not telling you sooner that you're a degenerate, sadistic old man. And you can go to hell before I apologize to you now or ever again. There's a, a great uh, selection of character actors, many of which I'm not familiar with, but there's a lot of good performances in there. Uh, the soldiers on trial, there's some emotional performances there. The general character, you know, the most hateable character, that actor does a really good job. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff in this movie. I even respect that there's not really that much score in this movie. There's just a little bit sprinkled in there, and when it's used, it's used very effectively. Like I said, the ending is very good. And the movie is so good that, you know... Even with my one real gripe on the film, like, yeah, uh, the movie is set in France, and we follow these French soldiers, and with the exception of one of the general characters, uh, none of the actors are French. It's you, they're either American or British actors. And yeah, I guess that can be a bit of a distraction, I guess, in the day standards, because if the film was made today, you know, people love their authenticity and accuracy and stuff like this, but... The actors still do a good job in their roles, especially Kirk Douglas. That I can overlook the fact that these are supposed to be French characters and nobody has a French accent in this movie. I still think it's a great movie for what it is. It's definitely one of the best Stanley Kubrick films, in my opinion. It's definitely up there. I still think The Shining is Kubrick's best movie, but I think... Just from memory of the ones I've seen, Paths of Glory is probably going to be my number two at the end of the day. 
I have to give movies like Spartacus and Barry Lyndon a rewatch. But right now, neck and neck, it's Paths of Glory and Spartacus for the best Scubert films. It's a really good film if you haven't seen it. A fantastic war movie for its time that's still powerful to this day with a lot of compelling, thought-provoking themes. And Kirk Douglas, fantastic actor. He's really good in this movie as well. Easily among Stanley Kubrick's better films. It's definitely what he attempted to do with Fear and Desire, but he made a better version of it with this movie, and I'm glad he got to do a better war movie this go-round with Paths of Glory because it's one of his best films. So... Thank you, Kubrick. This is a great movie. And at the end of the day, I'll be giving Paths of Glory a four and a half out of five stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting an 89 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Paths of Glory as part of my Stanley Kubrick director project, where I'm going through his complete filmography from his directing debut to his last film. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're a fan of Kubrick, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my Stanley Kubrick director playlist, where you can check out all the previous films I've covered in this director project. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting out of the early run of Kubrick films like Fear and Desire, Killer's Kiss, The Killing. I'm starting to get into the movies that really defined Kubrick as a director, so be on the lookout for more Stanley Kubrick content coming your way. Join me next time in this director project where I'll be reviewing Kubrick's 1960 epic film, Spartacus, also starring Kirk Douglas. I cannot wait to revisit this film again. I really enjoyed the film the one time I watched it, and I can't wait to revisit it again. So be on the lookout for my review of Spartacus coming to the channel real soon. But if you've seen Paths of Glory, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!